Hello everyone and welcome back to another story time video. Today I am going to update my top 25 games of all time list. Now before I get into this updated list, there's a few things I want to go over today that well, there's one very important thing I didn't go, I didn't mention uh, last time I made this list, and there's a couple other things I want to mention this time around as well. Uh, first thing is that I only had a total of 30 games on my list, and that's because to bring to my second point, all the games in this list, I have beaten at least once. So, I just want to get that out of the way that I have beaten all of these games at least once. Second is... That... Well, this is technically three, but... Well, my next point is that... I want to point out that this is simply just my opinion, of course, and your list will look very, very, well, might look very, very different compared to mine, and that's simply because uh, we are all humans with different tastes. And so, because of that, uh, I'm going to like some games that you don't like and vice versa. I have seen reviews that have said that Far Cry New Dawn is the best game ever. Well, I saw that in one review that Far Cry New Dawn is not only the best Far Cry game ever, but it might be the best game of all time in their opinion so uh a game that i don't really like but it's it did not make my top 25 so i just wanted to get that out of the way that no matter what your favorite game is your top 5 10 25 50 100 whatever the case might be i respect your opinion and I hope that you can respect my opinion in the same way that I'm respecting your opinion now the last thing I want to get into this is that there could be spoilers I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the last video but this is your spoiler alert right now there could very well be spoilers. I will try not to spoil anything for you guys, but sometimes it is hard for me not to spoil some things when I just freely talk about uh, the whole game in question. But, uh, one last thing before I get into this. Now I have beaten 47 games, so, uh, there are quite a few games that did not make the cut this time. And so, starting off, number 25 is a fan-made Portal 2 mod. Portal Stories Mel. This is a great game where I believe it is right around the same length as the original Portal. And it uses a lot of the... Uh, it, it uses a lot of similar levels that you would see in Dune... Or in uh, Portal 2, and it provides 
a unique experience and some clever humor. As the AI Wheatley, or Wheatley is the from Portal 2. Uh, shoot. Uh, he sounds British. I don't remember his name, but the, uh, the core that follows you around, he uh, hacks into a computer, and as a computer person myself, it is really funny. But it was a really good, uh, it was a really well-made game, and I appreciate the amount of effort that was put into this game, and I really enjoy it, and so that's why it takes uh, my 25th spot. <laughs> 24, I have Hotline Miami 2. This game is great, but I feel like it definitely could have been better. Number 23 is Lego Marvel Super Heroes. <laughs> Now, I can't bring this game up without saying that I believe LEGO games are my gaming guilty pleasure and maybe my guilty pleasure in general. Because I think LEGO games have the potential to be really good, but I kinda hate to admit that I have played them or at least this one, to my classmates, and I own a lot of LEGO games on Steam. I own the sequel to this one, I own all three LEGO Batmans, uh, LEGO Marvel Avengers, uh, uh, let's see, DC Villains, there's a lot. Oh, both Lego Harry Potters. There's there's a lot of Lego games that I own on Steam, so... But, uh, this game is a really well-made game, and so I give it the credit I it, it deserves. Uh, up next is Left 4 Dead 2. I really like Left 4 Dead 2, but... I kind of wish they had, or Valve and Turtle Rock had kept the same art style from Left 4 Dead 1, because I like the art style in Left 4 Dead 1 better, but, simply put, I could not rank Left 4 Dead 1 ahead of Left 4 Dead 2, because... Left 4 Dead 1 is certainly not as long as its sequel. Especially when you can uh, remember the fact that all of the levels from Left 4 Dead 1 are in Left 4 Dead 2. And then a lot more. So, Left 4 Dead 1 is not on this list. And, but even though I do like uh, Left 4 Dead 1 better... Per se, because of the length, I could not rank it better. It, or rank it higher than Left 4 Dead 2. If both games were the same length, the first game would be ahead of the second game. Up next, number 21, Doom 2. I love the Doom franchise. And... Sure, Doom 2 might be a bit, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, uh, oh shoot, it escapes me. It might be a bit old. I think I was searching for the word barbaric, but, uh, Left 4 Dead 2 might be really old. It's, uh, 28 years old. But, had I played it way back when it came out in 1994, I probably would have thought that it was practically the perfect game. 
as when you consider all of the improvements that were made from Doom 1 and Doom 2, I played the Ultimate Doom, by the way, which does not rank on this list, because uh, Doom 2 doubled the enemy count, and the levels are a lot bigger in scale. So, uh, when I rank games as well, I, I try to look at when they came out, and I try to, and I think about, okay, what can this game do for the time that it came out back then? Like, okay, the graphics aren't going to be that great, and maybe the mechanics aren't going to be that great for the time, so I don't... It's it's not an apples-to-apples apples comparison with uh, newer games, and that's what I uh, think about when I rank these retro games like Doom 2. Number 20 is Halo 3 ODST. Now... The Halo games that you don't play as Master Chief in uh, feel kind of weird to me. And ODST is a bit too short to be really considered higher, but I really enjoyed it, as you guys can tell, because it's ranked number 20, so I certainly enjoyed it. Number 19, you have the original Borderlands. Now, this game kind of suffers from the fact that there's no definite villain, and the storyline seems almost non-existent, especially compared to the later Borderlands games. But, Borderlands 1 for what it is, is a really good game. It might look dated now, 13 years later, and the gameplay might reflect that. It might be a bit clunky, but I, I enjoy it. Number 18 is Portal 2. Now, what helps it, uh, get this high is that the co-op is a totally separate entity from the campaign which if the co-op is different from the campaign and i have played it then i will uh give it credit for that I have actually completed all five co-op uh, test training uh, test tracks than the main actual campaign itself. There was one day in college last year where a classmate and I brought our computers in at the final day of, the, of a trimester and we played Portal 2 co-op basically the whole time. And we, had a, and we had a load of fun. So that helps it rank in the top 20. Number 17, we have this game that you're seeing background gameplay for right now. Half-Life 2, Episode 2. <laughs> now, Episode 2, up until Alex came out, which did change the ending of this game, uh, was the last thing in terms of Half-Life that we would see up until Alex. Uh, but I really like Episode 2 because it featured the new enemies that you've seen throughout this background gameplay. The Combine Hunter and the uh, Antlion Guardian, I believe the name of that thing that's shooting acid at me right now is. And so, because of that, and the, well, not only that, but the Vortigaunt is voiced by somebody who I like from Transformers Prime, Tony Todd, who voiced Dreadwing. 
which I loved uh, Dreadwing's voice back then. So the first time I heard the Vortigaunt, I was like, wait, that's Dreadwing! So I googled it, and yes, it is the same person. But I love uh, Tony Todd as the Vortigaunt, and I wish that Todd had voiced the Vortigaunts in Half-Life 2. But, also, I feel like the gameplay was refined from Half-Life 2 to this game, Episode 2. And so, Episode 2 took me about half or 40% as long as it, as it took me to beat uh, Half-Life 2. And I must say that if Episode 2 was as long as Half-Life 2, I think I would rank Episode 2 ahead of Half-Life 2. But it's not. It's shorter because Lord Gabe uh, didn't want the company to, or Valve to have burnout from constantly working on a game. And I perfectly understand that. But it sits at number 17. Number 16 is Halo Reach. Reach is a great game. But again, it just feels weird to not be playing as Master Chief in a Halo game. It's not a requirement for me, but it just feels weird. That would be like playing a Half-Life game without playing as Gordon Freeman. The possibility is there to still have a great game, but it just feels weird. By the way, I have not played Alex. Uh, but that would be like playing a Mario game and not playing as Mario, or a Sonic game and not playing as Sonic. It would just feel weird. But yeah, I love the story that uh, Reach told as it was the prequel to Combat Evolved. And so Bungie typically does a great job at telling stories, and they did a good job telling another story with this one. Up next is Bioshock Infinite. Of course, I like Infinite. Columbia uh, excites me as a city. Just a floating city 10,000 feet up, or 8,000 or so. Several thousand feet above uh, sea level. And I have watched a game theory on it, and theoretically it is possible for uh, Columbia to exist, but it is highly unlikely that a floating city that high up in the air, like Columbia, would exist. And... I kind of wish that this, okay, this, this might be heresy, again, my opinion here, but, uh, I feel like Elizabeth kind of detracts from the game a little bit. Like, I almost feel like she's a damsel in distress a lot more often than I would prefer. And so, if she wasn't such a damsel in distress, I could certainly rank the game higher. Also, if there was a true final boss, as opposed to just waves and waves of enemies coming at you, then I could rank it higher. As a matter of fact, uh, 
When I beat the game, the first time, well, the only time, I did not think that that was the end. I had no idea. I was just playing it and having a great time, and I did not realize that that was the end. Until you got the ending slideshow and Booker Drowning. Basically closing the loop. But, yeah. So, there's that. Number 14 is Max Payne 3. Rockstar really expanded upon uh, what Max Payne 1 and 2 had. Uh, Max Payne 1 and 2 basically took place mostly in New York, where uh, Max lived for a long time. But Rockstar decided to take it and have him move to uh, Brazil, I believe it was. And so you got a lot more levels in a lot more places, including uh, levels that took place in New York with Pazos. And I do not mind a story that tells a story that is not uh, oh, I'm trying to, I don't mind when media tells a story that's not, uh, just start to finish, like, the story is, uh, staggered around. I mean, I think Pulp Fiction is amazing. <gasps> And that story is told in bits and pieces throughout the movie. So I don't I don't mind that the story is uh like that. Otherwise I wouldn't like Hotline Miami 2 as much as I do. Because that story is the exact same way. But yeah, I I do really like it. Number 13 is Doom. 2016. I really enjoyed the Doom reboot. But I definitely feel like there could have been a lot more enemies. Well, I mean in terms of types, not quantity. Um... Uh, but yeah, in terms of types, I believe there could have been a lot more. And I do believe that there could have been more locations for levels. Excuse me. Because it's just basically Mars and Hell. What more is there, really? There's not a whole lot. The double jump boots toward the end that you get are cool. But... I just... I just wish there was more to Doom 2016. Number 12 is Borderlands 3. After a rocky start to the game in general, because I did not like the beginning too much, I did not like the villains for 95% of it. I'll get to that other 5% in a minute. I did not like the villains for 95% of it. And in the beginning, there were a lot more cutscenes with them. And overall, they were in your ear more. And uh, I did not like the Skywell level. 
I didn't hate the Skywell level, but I didn't, I was not a big fan of it. I was not a big fan. But the game definitely picked up toward the end, as in that last 5% of knowing the villains, but after Troy died, again, I, I warned you about spoilers at the beginning, uh, after Troy died, the last 5% uh, gave the villains purpose, and, and why? They're trying to open the Great Vault. And so that allowed me to like them more. And so that definitely helped the game out. And that it gave backstory to the villains where you can sympathize with them more. And not just in cutscenes, like in New Dawn where it's like, Several years ago. No, it it gave the villains purpose and their motivations to why they're searching and trying to open the Great Vault and how they started down that path. And so I thought that was really good that Gearbox did that. That definitely helped redeem it. I will also say that the uh, going to different planets and all the different types of guns there were helped it out as well. I, I really like that about the game too. Up next is Far Cry 5. Now, I really enjoy the Far Cry series. And with Far Cry 5, you have four separate villains as opposed to just one. And all of the villains, especially Joseph, is pretty good. And some of the missions are terrific like there is something <laughs> there is no other experience like driving a big semi truck with a mounted machine gun while a uh, barracuda by heart plays on the radio there is almost nothing like that out there than I know of and nothing out there like that that I have ever experienced. <laughs> that 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 was an amazing game. I just hate that the I just hate that New Dawn sucked so bad. <laughs> uh up next is Halo Combat Evolved. I absolutely love this game. Well, that, that goes without saying for any of these games. Well, most of these games on this list anyway. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have ranked them this high, or maybe in the top 25 in general. But, uh, I, I really enjoy Combat Evolved. Uh... The the levels feel like they were properly done. And because Bungie did not exactly expect a sequel, I am kind of fine with the lack of storytelling because they wanted it to be that way in the case of the game not doing too well. So that's why the game's story... Well, that's why you could play Combat Evolved without playing anything else. <laughs> uh, 
but I really enjoyed Combat Evolved. The Flood really surprised me, and they, uh, it definitely added some value to the game. Now, this game would be higher if either the library wasn't as repetitive as it is, or if it was just removed. Combat Evolved has nine fun levels, and the library. That's what it has. Nine fun levels, and the frickin' library. That's all I can say about the levels. But I love the game either way. And I don't uh, give games uh, points or whatnot for changing the industry. But Combat Evolved and Halo in general is something uh, all gamers should really respect in regards to how it uh, changed gaming as a whole. And I do. I do. Uh, so it's at number 10. Number 9 is Bioshock. Where do I even start? I'm going to start with Rapture. Rapture as a city in the sea is truly amazing. I said earlier that Columbia in Bioshock Infinite would be almost impossible, but not quite impossible. But no, Rapture would be impossible. The crush depth would be too much. You would be crushed if you went that far down below sea level. But uh, Andrew Ryan, uh, Atlas, oh, what's his, spoilers, uh, what's his actual name? Oh, shoot. I don't remember, but that twist... Freaking awesome. Even if the game would have ended right at the twist, it would have been amazing. But would you kindly rank the game in the top five? And I said, yes. I love, I love Bioshock. Number eight is Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Of course, I love this game. Uh, this game is basically a game that parodies itself. I also love the 80s neon aesthetic. Oh my god. The game is a tad short though. And the final boss is dealt with in a cinematic. But it was a terrific game. Nonetheless. That I definitely got a lot of enjoyment out of. Oh, excuse me. That I definitely got a lot of enjoyment out of the time that I played uh, Blood Dragon. And... I appreciate uh, Ubisoft for putting the game out there. Number seven is Hotline Miami. Again, 
Uh, it's that 80s retro aesthetic that I absolutely love. And the soundtrack, it just massages my ears. Oh my god. And the weapon sandbox in Hotline Miami is incredible. I love Hotline Miami, so it gets my number seven ranking. Number six is probably a game that hardly any of you have heard before. Transformers Devastation. Transformers Devastation plays uh, similar to an arcade style of game. But man, do I love it. Because it has that 80s aesthetic. And that's the way I have always wanted Transformer Battles to go down. I think that's part of the reason why I've always loved to, to watch a, an, an Optimus Prime versus Megatron battle. It's because they don't just shoot at each other all the time. They go swinging at each other. And in Devastation, that's what happens. Now, the storyline is basically... I can, I can sum it up in a sentence. Or two. Megatron is trying to cyberform a city. You must stop him. That's it. That's it. The game would definitely rank higher if you could play as the Decepticons without it being DLC. Oh, and that's another thing. I do not rank these games with their DLC. I rank them uh, without their DLC. I should have mentioned that at the beginning, but oh well. Uh, number five is Half-Life 2. Now, Half-Life 2 did do a lot of things for this industry, but I don't give it points for that necessarily. I give it the credit and the respect that it deserves for that, but that doesn't help uh, impact its ranking, whether it be good or bad. Uh, but the Ravenholm level was awesome. I did go through my first playthrough with only using the gravity gun in Ravenholm, and that was absolutely incredible. That lift where Father Grigori helps you in order to escape Ravenholm, I basically had to survive that based on luck. Because there's hardly anything up there you can use to throw at your enemies. So, uh, that was stressful. That doesn't impact anything, but, but it was stressful. Uh, but it was certainly fun going through a lot of the, uh, certain stretches, like this game that you're seeing now, and this part of this particular playthrough of this game, uh, with the gravity gun. And so, I do definitely love that. Number four is Halo 2. Halo 2 ranks this high because the story is absolutely incredible. The fact that you play as the Arbiter does not bother me for several reasons. The first reason being is that if you didn't play as the Arbiter at all, then the story would not be as good because you wouldn't have that perspective of the, um, uh, I was about to say the Combine, of the, uh, Shoot, I forgot the enemy type. The, uh... Ah, oh, gosh darn it, I forgot. 
The Covenant. Yes, the Covenant. You would not have the perspective of the Covenant, and thus the story would not be as good. So, I plus, also, I, I like to play it as well, uh, because it's, it's a fresh new perspective, and it uh, allows the Civil War to happen, and uh, Halo 2 is just amazing. The story is incredible! The story is the best story that I have experienced firsthand in uh, video games so far. And by the way, uh, I might play Halo uh, later on this year for this channel. And if I do, when I get to Halo 2, I'm going to absolutely play Halo 2 on Legendary. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it at least. But yeah. Halo 2 number 4. Number 3 is... Probably my most flawed game... In my top 25... If not my top 15 or 20. And I say that because... Uh, well, it is, but I'll get to why it's flawed here in a second. Uh, I, I really like this game because the story is awesome. You are in Africa during a civil war where the jackal is arming both sides of the conflict. Now, uh, two or three months ago, we got confirmation that the Jackal is actually Jack Carver from the first game. I did not know that before I ranked this game on my list. Uh, that, that wouldn't really impact it standing on the list. But I thought that that was cool. So, <laughs> yeah. This game is the complete opposite of Blood Dragon on the spectrum of taking itself very seriously or parodying itself. Far Cry 2 is the most immersive game I have ever played. And my god, do I love it. Uh, also, the twist at the end, uh, once you get into Act 3, oh my god, that, that definitely adds to it. If, if there's a twist in a video game about three-fourths or a third of the way into the game, then... That uh, definitely helps it, in my opinion, because it's like, oh my god, this this is uh, reinvigorating my interest in this game, and this is awesome. And uh, so, now to the flaws. This game is nicknamed Far Drive. I don't mind the driving so much because the world is absolutely amazing. I love the African savanna as a world to explore. <laughs> but the voice acting is not that great. I wish we could either have text-based dialogue or good dialogue. It doesn't really hurt it, but if 
there was a game very similar to it with good uh, voice acting, that would be a deciding factor. And by the way, I just want to point out that I did not have any bugs on this PC when I played the game. On my old PC, I did have the bobblehead uh, glitch. But this is where I had absolutely no no bugs or glitches. Not the 27% uh, glitch. Nothing. Not a single thing. <laughs> but... Uh, the missions are kind of boring after a while. Basically, a mission consists of either kill this person or blow this thing up. That's it. That's it. I wish I could tell you there was more mission variety, but no, I can't do that. I just can't do that. Because there's... N because there isn't. But yeah, uh... Number two is... Well, it's what was number one last time around. So that does tell you that I have a new favorite game. Fallout New Vegas is number two on this list. I love the desert as a setting. I would love to live in the desert in the southwest of the United States one day as it really intrigues me. And this is where this game takes place. In California and Las Vegas. Well, Nevada. Las Vegas is just a city, it's not a state. Despite what some people might think. Yes, there are other cities in Nevada. Like Reno. I believe that's in Nevada. But there are other cities in Nevada besides Las Vegas. Come on now. But, uh, yeah, so... Uh, the fact that you get to play as the four factions, the NCR, the, uh, Legion, Mr. House, or Yes Man, I really like it. That, that definitely helps add value to it, in my opinion. <laughs> And I I can't find a whole lot of things that I would find flaws with in this game. But I wish that the Brotherhood of Steel did not have to get taken out as often as it does. I wish you could work with the Brotherhood of Steel more often. But, yeah. My number one favorite game, well, my number one game of all time, and my all-time favorite game, is Doom Eternal. <sighs> I, I don't know what I could say about this game that has not been said about other priceless well i'm i'm going a bit overboard here partly for the joke but i don't know what i could say here that hasn't been said for other masterpiece works of art before but doom eternal is nearly a perfect it's not perfect there are no perfect shooters but it is nearly perfect <laughs> And, to be fair, I probably would have said the same thing about Doom way back in 1994. Had I played it in 1994. Uh, but, regardless, based on the amount of 
different ways you can kill an enemy. You can use Flame Belch. You can use a grenade. You can, uh, of course, shoot an enemy. You can chainsaw an enemy. You can, uh, there's new and improved glory kill animations, including using a Doom Blade, which is awesome. You can shoot and use a grenade at the same time, which definitely helps in a lot of situations. Especially if there's a big group of enemies. There is a bigger variety of enemies when it comes to Doom 2016. As the Pain Elementals. And the Archviles return. From Doom 2. Doom Eternal also... Feels like the right length to me. And there's a lot of story if you want that kind of thing. To the point where it doesn't shove itself in your face. And if you actually care, it tells a good story. But... Doom Eternal is my favorite game of all time. And I don't know if anything will top it. But I am very open to the idea of having a new favorite game. Assuming I think that something is better than Doom Eternal. Because... That just means that there's a freaking awesome game that I get to play. Because, like I said, I think Doom Eternal is freaking awesome and just about perfect. And so, if there's a game that is better than that, that I haven't played before, or that hasn't come out yet, or both then I very much welcome that. <laughs> because with the state of gaming right now, I am not too, too hopeful that games will be as good as they were uh, 15 or 20 years ago. So, <sighs> yeah. And see us, guys. I do believe that that will do it for this story time video. And till next story time video, I will see you all later. Goodbye, guys. Thank you all for watching.